It's been said that this is the summer for big biceps. We were just reading headlines here. Uh, what, what accounts for the continuing uh, popularity of this kind of action adventure, the, the superhero type, the man who's larger than life? Well, first of all, I agree it's going to be the summer of the big biceps. So here's the biceps, and this is going to be my summer. <laughs> but uh, I, I feel that uh, those kind of films that have action and entertainment throughout the movie are always the movies that are going to do well at the box office because it's simply the kind of thing that the audience in the summer, especially the young kids, expect out of a movie, and that's what they want to see. So we, we provide this with this film, uh, with Predator. We are going to have all those kind of elements that will make it a very big, big summer movie. When I ran across this script, uh, the Predator script, uh, it was it immediately connected that this could be the ultimate enemy. Because, like you said, uh, you, you, you don't see it. It can camouflage itself at any time. It has tremendous strength, much more than 20 uh, soldiers any ever could have. It uh, is very quick, it can fly through the trees. Uh, it, um, it has a tremendous power all around. So, I mean, we are faced with something that is so weird and so unique that it really takes a lot of extra strength and uh, primitive kind of behavior all the way through to, to really uh, fight this uh, creature. It is an action adventure film. It's packed with action from the beginning to the end, and on top of it, it's a horror movie. Uh, after the th first third of the movie turns into a horror movie, it becomes a very intense movie. There are some great characters in it by the name of Carl Weathers, Jesse the Body Ventura, who is one of the world champion wrestlers, uh, Bill Duke. Uh, we are, it, it's, it's one of those things where we decided to not have one guy go against the whole enemy or whatever we fight always against, but it's like a team of guys, like the Dirty Dozen or the, the Magnificent Seven or something like this. So it made it much more fun and it of course created much more action and excitement and much more acting and interacting of the different characters. Uh, so that's something that they uh, probably will expect but there will be added on things. Uh, what is different is that in the whole film this time I'm in uh, high heels. It was extremely tough uh, doing the shooting of uh, Predator because uh, we are first of all uh, faced with the jungle which is not a pleasant uh, place to be stuck in. Uh, we have been uh, suffering a tremendous heat down there, humidity, uh, all these strange elements of uh, also, uh, we never were standing for eight weeks on a flat ground in the jungle. It was always some hill where we never could really stand up rela and relax. Uh, also carrying around those heavy machine guns and, uh, and uh, worrying about snakes and uh, scorpions and stuff like that was not pleasant either. So, it really, it was, it was tough, but when you think of what you produce, the kind of film you bring back, rather than having just sceneries of Los Angeles or of some buildings, you have really a great uh, background there and a great uh, uh, atmosphere that you create for being in a jungle. So I think that's the most important thing. You always have to look at the end product and by producing something that big um, was worth it. Speed, I'm off. <laughs> How tall are you, Kevin? 7'2". There aren't that many guys that can really take on Arnold Schwarzenegger. No, there's not. And uh, I'm glad to have the opportunity, you know, to try to out Arnold Arnold in this action adventure. It was a lot of fun. I got to train. I got to train with Arnold in his gym, um, which was a lot of fun. What kind of preparation did you have to do? Well, for Predator, it was going to be a fight sequence. But we were going to have to tussle. So it was mostly um, just getting in shape for endurance and having to last. You know, I had to be strong enough to fight Arnold and manage the suit and all of those uh, special effect weapons that I had to carry. What about the hairy suit? The hairy suit? You know, it was neat because it was heavy. And it was, it was uh, a job to, to perform in, but it was so well made and it was so like a work of art. Every hair on the suit was individually threaded in and they just took so much time and care with it that it was like real. <laughs> Everybody treated it as if it was real. It is real. You asked the crew. <laughs> you asked Rick. Let's say five years ago, if someone were to tell you that you would have the leads in two big summer movies, but you'd be in disguise, <laughs> what would you have thought? Uh, five years ago, I'd have thought, I'll take it. <laughs> disguise. A year ago, this year, I'll take it. 
I mean, they're great parts, great movies. You are the star, but nobody's going to recognize you on the street. That's true. Uh, I guess it's the price you pay. Um, people will start to recognize me more, and I'm sure those aren't going to be the only parts that I play. I think they're both going to get a lot of recognition, and people are going to ask, who is that guy? And I'll, I'll be around. <laughs> Up there? Up there. <laughs> now, for Harry, these are two despairingly different parts. I mean, everybody loves this creature, Harry, and then this other guy, an alien, is just a murdering varmint. Right. Varmint's a good word. <laughs> Which one is more close to, to you or that's more fun to play? I think Harry's definitely more me, uh, the lovable visitor in the home. It's, uh, it's a good part. It, there was a lot to do, you know, there was a lot of things to play. And the other, you know, you kill people and then you kill more people <laughs> and then you die. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't believe in, in, in uh, those kind of uh, uh, the timing of a film and there's right now uh, sword and sorceries in or western films in or comedies in and all those kind of things. I don't believe in that because I feel that uh, anytime you have a picture that is done well and, uh, and money is being put behind the marketing and so on, the film will do well no matter what it is. Uh, you're right, in Platoon, it was very obvious that the people enjoyed very much the, the realism. Uh, but then again, uh, you have a film that opened uh, at the same time, which was Crocodile Dundee. What was real about that film? Nothing. It was totally a, a funny story, a humorous story, and it uh, made the same amount of money, even more so. Uh, then we have Beverly Hills Cop. Is that realistic? Is that documentary style? No. It's totally made up story, something hypothetical, this guy coming from uh, Detroit, coming out to the Beverly Hills, helping the cops out here. So I think it really doesn't matter what kind of film you have. Any kind of a film would do well if it is well done. And if it is a rip off or a copy of another film or junk, which we have so many companies in this town that make junk, uh, then those movies will go in the toilet, no matter what they do and what the theme of the movie is.